Good morning and welcome everybody. Um, please do sit, we've got just a few things to, to talk about, um, not least to read the first reading for Lance and Marriage. Um, as you will possibly notice, we've got some new LED light bulbs which is making it much brighter in the name and this will also reduce costs. So it's really, it's green, it's, it's, uh, and we're in a process of replacing them throughout but they're definitely in here. Yes, you need a few sunglasses because it's quite bright. And it's um, being paid for by the diocese. And they're paid for by the diocese, they are, because there's funding <laughs> for green <laughs> energy. <laughs> um, yesterday afternoon, we had about 30 plus, I lost count, uh, about 30 people uh, came and had tea and cake, and quite a lot of people went up the towers. So many thanks to everybody who made cakes, Madeline who washed up all day, and Ali who went up and down the tower about seven times. Um, so, so, so that's all of that. Um, this evening at Finswait, there is at six o'clock, there is a choral even song um, with the uh, choir with Margaret Patterson playing the organ, so that, that's just lovely. And, um, and then on Thursday, we have St. Peter's Day um, um, evening service here at 7 o'clock, uh, which is communion, and um, in the daytime we've got the children from Lindale School coming, and we're going to do various activities, one of which is hopefully, if it works out, we're going to actually, we're not going to pin it on this altar frontal, but they're going to actually do some artwork, which we're going to have that evening as the altar frontal. Um, so that's that, um, and if we could just um, pay attention for the bands, the reading of the bands, which is very exciting, isn't it, Hannah? So, I published The Bands of Marriage between Hannah Louise Birch, single of Field Orphan with Lindell, and Mark William Ridley, single of the same parish. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it. And this is for the first time of asking. <coughs> We'll start with our first hymn, number 81, Lord for the Years.
deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He sit on me in prayer. Dear beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although the same, by his own, sorry, and although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet it ought we most chiefly so to do when we, when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many of us here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying with me, Almighty and merciful Father, we have heard and strayed from our ways our God's sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against our holy Lord. We have left undone the sins before all the world. And we have done those things which you all want to have done. And there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have blessed us on us, miserable pleasures. Spare thy way for God, which would confess their faults. Restore thy men and dependents, according to thy promises, declare them to make God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant them to the most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may make our own with the godly, righteous, and so to the glory of our holy name. Amen. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that we may all be cleansed from our sins, and serve thee with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
mind, which is on the inside of your cue sheet, on the second to the third page. Um, and we're going to sing, say all the verses together, because it's not very long. Surely for your sake, by the suffering of the road, and shame to the covered in my face, I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal is the old house that has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen on me. I humble myself with fasting, that that was turned to my reproach. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your, your great, great compassion, turn to, to me. How I drop the face from your servant. servant. Be swift and ask me, for I am his distress. Draw, Draw near to me and redeem me, because it is my family to the living. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. Be sick for the first reading. first lesson is written in the 20th chapter of the book of Jeremiah, beginning to read at verse 7. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out, I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him, and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me, like a dread warrior. Therefore my per persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous, you see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. Here endeth the first lesson. We stand to sing the tedium.
Gospel reading is taken from Matthew, the 10th chapter, beginning at verse 24. Jesus summoned the twelve and sent them out with the following instruction. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who, call, who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet not one of them will fall to the ground, unperceived by your father? And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid, you are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone therefore who acknowledge me before others, I, will, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also de deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. I have come to set man against his father, and daughter against her mother, and daughter of your in-law against her mother-in-law, and one, one's foes will be members of one of their household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Here in the Gospel reading. We stand to sing the jubilee today.
God's Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen.
and the thoughts and feelings of our hearts and minds be always acceptable in your mind. Amen. Some quite difficult readings today. There's a lot about suffering and about amounts of love. And probably the intensity of a child for their mother, or a mother for their child, or a father for their child, a child for their father, is, is given as an example. We need to love God more than that. That's hard to imagine. Really, really hard to imagine. I, um, we went to Wales Cathedral last Sunday for the service, and in the book, in the, in the gift shop, I found a lovely book about Psalms. And I've been thinking for quite a long time since we've stopped doing the meditations that it would be nice to restart them when we can keep the church more economically um, and focus on a psalm as for each one of the meditations. So this just jumped out at me and it's Alison Morgan. Um, I've got a couple of her other books. And I just want to read from a bit about the anatomy of pain because the readings talk about pain and suffering and there are many different types of pain, aren't there? And in this chapter, she starts with a Thomas Hardy poem, which is rather beautiful. I do love Thomas Hardy. I climbed to the crest, and fog festooned, the sun lay west, like a crimson wound. Like that wound of mine, of which none knew, for I had given no sign that it pierced me through. So that's from The Wound by Thomas Hardy. And Alison goes on in this chapter to say, it seems odd that we think we might find solace in times of trouble. And we do have trouble, don't we? There's been more activity in Russia in the last 24 hours, as well as our own things in our own lives. So finding solace in times of trouble through a series of texts composed thousands of years ago by people far away and whose eyes were very different to ours, who spoke in a language we do not understand, and their compositions to music of which we have no record. So the Psalms, we have lost the original chant. And yet, perhaps, it is their very antiquity that makes the Psalms talk to us. These are works that have stood the test of time, forged in a furnace of suffering. They have been owned and sung by generation after generation. Perhaps they have two characteristics which more than any other have ensured their portability. Firstly, the Psalms do not attempt to offer theology of suffering. They insist on feeling the pain rather than questioning or analysing it. And in so doing, they force us to face up to the emotional reality of what it is that is going on inside us. Opening a door through our mental self-defences. The psalmist thrust us into the presence of God and insists that we say it as it is, and not as we would like it to be. You will, they announce firmly, have this difficult conversation. You will have it now, and you may find that you, will, you, that you feel differently as a result. Secondly, the psalms really explain the specific circumstances in which they were written and for which they seek help. We may know that the psalmist has been betrayed, that he cannot sleep at night, that he is facing all sorts of obstacles and threats, but we are not told who betrayed him or precisely what is going on inside his head as he tosses and turns on his bed, or, or what exactly is the outcome he most fears. The timeless genius of the psalmist is that he leaves blank spaces for us to populate with our own experience. Yes, I find myself crying as I read his complaints. Exactly so, I explain as I pour my troubled feelings into his words. And so it is that the conversation I wasn't sure I was allowed to have heaves itself out of the recesses of my most secret places and into the broad daylight of an encounter with God. <coughs> You have been betrayed by someone you thought you could trust. You are being bullied at work. Someone you love has died. Perhaps, says God, you would like to talk about it. If you could take your service book and turn.
turn to the back. We'll finish with the prayer of St. Benedict at the top of that. O gracious and holy Father, give us wisdom to perceive you, intelligence to understand you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you, through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will sing our next hymn in a minute. Give James a chance to get back to the organ. So, 284 Grand Heaven. Almighty God, we pray for all those we know, our families, friends, and 
and acquaintances who are suffering in mind or body. And we pray for those living in dread of the escalating cost of living, the increasing number of people who worry about the future. Comfort and support them, Lord, we pray. And we pray especially for those we have known and loved who have passed into your tender care. And we remember those lost in this submersible accident this week. We pray that you will comfort and give support to the bereaved and those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father of mankind, we pray for all who work in our National Health Service, surgeons, doctors, nurses and ancillary staff, and for those who care for the old and infirm, our children and young people. Merciful Lord Father, accept the needs of our prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our commons common supplications unto thee, and does promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us say the grace together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all, evermore. Amen. We sing our last and final hymn, the collection hymn, and that is 581, Take My Life and Let It Be.
Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of love and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.